Okay, let's finish off today's lecture by looking at properties of superheated vapor. Properties of superheated vapor. So we have got the saturation dome here. Let's put up the TV plot. So let's recall here we used quality to get properties at for saturated mixtures. So inside we have saturated mix where quality is important. Put in an ISO bar here. Then over here we have super cooled liquids. Okay, we just taught, we just did a problem involving supercooled liquids where we have those property approximations for specific volume, internal energy, and enthalpy. And then out here, out here we have superheated vapor. So this side of the dome, out to the right, we have a vapor or superheated vapor. Remember, it's saturated vapor on the right hand side of the dome saturated liquid on the left hand side of the dome and therefore we're superheated if we're off to the right the right hand side of the dome so how do we get specific volume internal energy and enthalpy for super heated vapor how do we do it well we have to use a bunch of tables Tables. What kind of tables? Super heated vapor tables. Super heated vapor tables. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. Okay, so here's our saturation temperature table, our saturation pressure table. And if I keep going, Table B4, superheated vapor table for H2O. Pressures are listed here. Temperatures are listed here. Specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy. Don't worry about entropy, that's gonna come up later. So properties of superheated vapors as a function of pressure in bar and temperature in centigrade. You have pages and pages of superheated vapor tables all right so let's uh do an example here there's nothing more than looking up properties in a table so let's set up an example here where we're going to deal with superheated vapors so let's uh switch out okay superheated vapors so let's say we have uh h2o so example, this is gonna have some superheated vapor stuff in it. Let's say we have uh, given H2O and we start off at a temperature T1 of 520 degrees C and a pressure P1 of 100 bar. Pretty high pressure, pretty high temperature, okay? And then we have an ISO. Hmm, I'll tell you what. This H2O is in a rigid container. Rigid container. What do I mean by rigid? I mean constant volume. Constant volume, no change in volume, rigid container. So this uh, H2O starts off at T1 and P1 in a rigid container. Let me put up the schematic. So here's our rigid container. And initially we have a temperature T1 and P1. So this is state one right here, okay? So we have H2O in a rigid container. And then 
we cool the H2O down until we get a temperature T2 of 270 degrees C. Okay? So we got this rigid container and now we end up at state two and we have a temperature T2. All right. What are we supposed to find? Find, oh, I'm gonna run out of space. Find, I wanna find the pressure P2. I wanna find the final specific volume V2, and I want to know the state, the state. Is it a super cool liquid? Is it a saturated mixture? If it's a mixture, what's the quality? Okay, so what's the state? What's the specific volume? And what is the final temperature at state two? Okay. Now to whet your appetite here, let's put up the TV diagram. We'll finish this up next time. So I've got my P1 isobar. I don't know where I am on the isobar, but I do know it's a rigid container, constant volume. I do know that I'm going to be moving horizontally up and down the TV diagram. Why horizontally? Because if it's a rigid container, it's an isochoric process. We will finish this up next time, and then we will move on to ideal gas law and some additional stuff from chapter two in the remaining part of the lecture.